In the previous videos, we looked at how to calculate the cost of equity as well as the cost of debt and preferred stock. And our ultimate goal is to calculate the cost of capital, that is the required return that a firm needs in order to undertake a project. And what we usually do is we calculate what we refer to as the weighted average cost of capital, oftentimes abbreviated as WACC or WAC. And what the weighted average cost of capital is, is just an average of the cost of equity, the cost of preferred stock, and the cost of debt. And you've calculated, I'm sure, uh, weighted averages before. If your professor tells you that the that the midterm is worth 30 percent and the final exam is worth 70 percent, you don't figure out your class average by just adding the two numbers together and dividing by two. You take 30 percent of your midterm grade and add it to 70 percent of your final exam grade. So here you're taking a weighted average. So the best way to see this is through an example. And so let's assume that a company has a stock price so the price of the stock is equal to $50. And let's assume that there are 3 million shares outstanding. Let's also assume that the firm has $25 million in preferred stock. and 75 million in debt. So these numbers have already been calculated. They could be looked up on the balance sheet of a firm. Here we can just figure out what's the value of the equity and we'll use E to mean the value of the equity and it's just going to be price Time shares. So in this case it's going to be $50 a share times 3 million shares and that's going to be equal to $150 million. Similarly we'll refer to the value of the preferred stock as P and the value of the debt as D. So what we need to do is we need to figure out the total value of the firm. And keep in mind we're using market value proportions. You could use book value, but book value is not reflective of current market conditions. If the stock market is rising, we want to reflect that in the proportion of financing that's using equity and debt and preferred stock. So what's the total value of the firm? You just add up these three numbers. The value of the firm is equity plus preferred stock plus debt. And what are the proportions? The proportions, the proportion of equity, which is, it's just going to be the amount of equity we have divided by the total value of the firm. So what's the total value of the firm here? <clears throat> Equity is 150. Preferred stock is 25. Excuse me. <clears throat> and the debt is 75. So that turns out to be 250 million. So what's the value of the equity? It's going to be 150 divided by 250. And if we just punch that into our calculator, we get 60% or 0.6. The proportion of preferred stock is going to be P over V. So it's going to be 25 over 250. 
and that's easy to calculate. That's going to be 10%. And the proportion of debt is just going to be D over V, which is 75 over 250. And so we can just divide that out. 75 divided by 250 equals 30 percent. Actually, I didn't really need to do the calculation because these three numbers should add up to 1, should add up to 100 percent. So now that we have the proportions, let's figure out what the, va what the weighted average cost of capital is. The weighted average cost of capital is defined as the proportion of equity times the return equity holders require plus the proportion of preferred stock times the return that preferred stockholders require. And recall that in the previous tutorials, we showed how to calculate these. Return on equity could be calculated using the constant growth dividend formula. It could also be calculated using the security market line equation. Preferred stocks return is generally calculated as the dividend yield. Take the dividend, divide it by the price. That gives you the return that preferred stockholders require. And the return to debt Okay, the proportion of debt is D over V, but the return that debt holders require is calculated using the yield to maturity. Now we have to do one more thing here with the debt, is we have to make an adjustment for taxes. So we have to multiply by 1 minus the tax rate. So this is our marginal tax rate. The reason we do that is that interest payments on debt are tax deductible to the firm. So if for every dollar that the firm pays in interest, they subtract it from their income before they compute taxable income. So if they're in, let's say, the 30% tax bracket, for every dollar that they pay in interest, they save 30 cents in taxes. So they're only paying 70 cents. So instead of paying a 30%, instead of paying 100% of the interest in their cost, Uncle Sam picks up 1 minus, uh, or picks up T for it because it's deductible. So in this case, they would save 30 cents in taxes, so they're paying 70%. All right, let's try and do a numerical example here. Let's assume that we've already calculated the required return to equity and that's 14 percent that the return to preferred stock is nine percent again I could have made a more detailed problem here where we calculated everything but it's it's rather difficult to do because YouTube limits you to 15 minute videos so I'm going to assume we've already done these okay you can see the previous tutorials for how they're done and we need a tax rate so let's assume the tax rate is 40 percent. So we just plug into this equation to get the weighted average cost of capital. All right, we've already figured out the proportion of equity in the uh, first half of uh, this tutorial, 60 percent, times the 14 percent required return to equity plus we figured out that preferred stock made up 10 percent of the financing times the return the preferred stockholders require which in our example is nine percent plus thirty percent times the return that debt holders require ten percent times one minus the tax rate so one minus point four zero All right, let's see what we get here Point, point 0.6 times 14 is 
0.1 times 9 is 0.9. And then we have 0.3 times 10, 10% times 1 minus 0.4, which is 0.6. So we get 1.8. And let's add those together. 1.8 plus 0.9 plus 8.4 gives us 11.1%. So our required return is 11.1 percent. That's how much the firm has to earn in order to be able to satisfy the people that provided the funding for the firm. Stock, common stockholders or equity, preferred stockholders, and debt holders. Now one caveat here is when you're using the weighted average cost of capital, the assumption is is that the project you're analyzing using net present value or internal rate of return has the same level of risk as the average project undertaken by the firm. If you're undertaking riskier projects, stockholders, preferred shareholders, and debt holders might require a higher rate of return, in which case this isn't valid. Um, it, on the other hand, if you're undertaking a less risky project, then they might be willing to, they might be satisfied with a slightly lower return. So this assumes that the risk is the average level of risk for projects the firm has undertaken. But it gives us now a, a theoretical method for finding a required return as opposed to just saying let's use 10 percent or let's use 12 percent or 15 percent. We're using um, the returns that are required by the people who finance our firm.